Well, good morning, everybody. We've got a great call line, and we're excited about this young man who's come with us every Wednesday in the month of uh, April. He uh, was working at Applebee's for many years, seven years, been involved with ACN, got started at uh, now he's 20, I think he's 27, got started, took off like a rocket ship, <laughs> built a big organization real quick in his career, uh, made a few mistakes, and all of a sudden, <laughs> He said, okay, if I did it once, I could, what does Jim Rose say? If you've done it once, you could do it again. And guess what? He took off again and made it all the way back up to regional vice president again. And not only that, he just popped his first regional vice president, as we saw last month at the virtual ACN convention. And I mean, he is on fire. And he loves his business. He's based out of uh, Texas slash Baltimore, Maryland, and he's built a group down in Miami. And I tell you what, he just talked... What can I say? Without further ado, Regional Vice President Platinum, the great, the one and only, Mr. Shaquille Cooper. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, sir. What about yourself? I'm doing pretty great myself. Just got finished working out not too long ago, so. Me too. Get the day, get the game going, so. excited to be back again um and i put together some more great work i think you guys are gonna love the information <coughs> I was able to put together um and if you like again like i always say i wish that you guys would take notes i do take time and effort to put into the trainings that i do um put together for you guys and the information honestly is really life-changing and today is going to be a little different like every single week but i can tell you that the information is going to hit home, but more importantly, the information is going to push you to just become a better person. So as always, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a quick five minute video to get you guys up to speed. And then from there, I'm going to go straight into the information. So hold on one second while I do this. I was miserable in my life. I didn't like waking up. I ain't have no purpose. I ain't know what I was supposed to be doing. On October 8th, 1985, I walked in a comedy club for the first time. Signed up for the following week. The following week, a girl took me down there. She said, you got to go to comedy club. You're the funniest person I've ever met. I never even heard of comedy club. At 27, I walked in a comedy club. I signed up for the following week. I'm gonna sit here and learn. I knew I was funny, I just didn't know what to do with it. They had 10 acts go up. Nine of them went up. I didn't laugh at one joke. I was just sitting there just, man, I wish that was me. Man, they should have said this. Every joke they told, I knew the punchline before they said it, and I wrote a better punchline in my mind what they should have said. It got to guy number 10, they called his name. He wasn't there. They said, well, he's not here. We're gonna go to next week's list. Steve Harvey, where are you? Long story short, I won amateur night that night. I won $50. It was a 45 minute drive to my house with this girl named Gladys. I cried 45 minutes. She said, what you crying for? It ain't but $50. I said, no, no, you don't even understand. I, I was born tonight. I now know what I'm supposed to do. I went to work the next day, October 9th, and quit my job. With $50, I had nothing. I just never gave up. I'm gonna tell you something. That decision cost me everything I had. I, I lost everything. I lost my family. I lost friends. I lost everything. I became homeless. I lived in a car for three years. But I just saw this, I saw this, I saw this vision. I just pursued it. I said, wow, that's it. You have to take chances in life. Life is about risk. If you play it safe in life, you ain't gonna have much of a life. If you play it safe, you won't have much of a life. Life is risk. It take, it take courage to pursue your dream. Now it's gonna cost you something. Most people are not willing to pay what it costs to go after your dream because you're going to have to hurt a little bit. And most people don't like being uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, please do not pursue success because success is a very uncomfortable feeling. 
and I just learned to be, I learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Life is hard. See, for every time you have a plan, a dream, an aspiration or a goal. Do you know what happens every time you have one of those? This thing comes along called life. It happens to everybody. Life has disappointments. It's got peaks and valleys. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. That's a valley. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you can retire. That's a valley. Somebody going to fire you for an unjust cause. That's a valley. The people that got your credit card go sell their company, go sell their business to another credit card company. Your 18% go up to 26%. You don't even know why now your minimum didn't change. Because you had because it's life. You can stop thinking that life fitting to be easy. Because I got news for you, it ain't. It's a false hope to think you're gonna have a, a, a wonderfully carefree life. That's unthinkable. We all live in this bubble. What you gotta do. You got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Look, I'd love to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'd love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things. Dang, they happen. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. Now, like I was telling you before, if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really, really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. I'm sorry, but here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities, all of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. So what I love about that video, honestly, is the fact that, you know, he talks about success. So I want to talk about success a little bit. So a lot of people, they say they want to be successful. I want to be successful. And the thought of being successful is the easiest part. But what I can tell you is that anything that you want to do in life, no matter what it is, is going to be hard. And the reason why it's going to be hard, because if it was easy, everyone would already be successful. So if you look in the world, why is there about 3% of the people control 90, 97% of the wealth? And it's because only 3% of the people are actually able to go through the journey on becoming successful without giving up. So I put together a training today and the first slide, it talks about manifest, speak your goals into existence. And you guys always hear me talking about speaking your goals into existence, speaking your goals into existence, right? So what I love most about being able to manifest is that this is the first step in anything that you wanna do. You first have to speak it into existence. And what I wanna show you guys really quickly is something that I just keep in one of my wallets, right? And I think I showed you guys last week, a couple of them, but I have, some things that I speak into existence. My handwriting is ugly, but you guys can see, what does it say? I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire, I am a millionaire. Every day that I wake up before I go to sleep, I say this out loud to myself every single day. And I have many other goals and stuff that I have, but my goal in life is to become a millionaire. And that, that's, listen, that's, everyone don't wanna become a millionaire and that's fine. But for someone like me, from where I came from, I know that I can't help nobody if I don't have no money. I can't help my family. I can't give back to the community. See, I want to start companies where I can hire homeless people to just clean up the city, to just clean up neighborhoods and things like that. You know, what I've started recently doing is 
in the past two weeks, I've just been driving around giving homeless people my shoes. I gave about 30 pairs of shoes, brand new pair of shoes that I probably wore once or twice to homeless people on the side of the road. I gave the homeless guy 10 pairs of shoes on the side of the road and some money the other day. I didn't take a video. I didn't take a picture. Why? Because I don't do it for other people. I do it because I want to be able to give back to the world because if I'm blessed with all of these things, why can I not give back to people, right? And that's what's the most important fact about becoming successful is giving back. A lot of people don't want to become successful because they're scared about what they're going to go through in a journey. But when you have a bigger vision and you care about other people, you're going to go through whatever it takes because my goal is to become a better person in life and leave a better impact. So number one, if you've never seen the movie called The Secret, I need you to go to YouTube and watch it. If you have Netflix, I think it's still on Netflix, but you need to watch the movie The Secret because whatever the mind of a man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Once I read this book and once I saw that movie about seven years ago, it changed my life. Instead of watching TV, I put my vision board in front of the TV. I had a big flat screen TV and I didn't turn it on. I haven't watched, sat down and really watched TV in years because I'm too busy trying to accomplish my goals instead of watching other people that already accomplished their goals. Some people spend more time watching TV and surfing Facebook and Instagram than they do spending time on envisioning their goals. So number one, you have to manifest your goals, speak your goals into existence. I don't care what your situation look right now, speak your goals into existence. You have to be careful what you think about because it might come true. I tell people all the time, be careful what you think about. If you think you're going to be broke, guess what? You're going to be broke. If you think you can't be successful, you're not going to be some successful, right? But if you can think things into existence, you can literally create the life that you want. And a lot of people, they try to use other people for why they're not successful. But in reality, you're not successful or you're not where you need to be in life. It's because the things that you speak out of your mouth when no one is around. I don't care how great you can speak in front of your mentor, in front of your family members, but what do you say to yourself when you're by yourself? Do you really believe that you can have and do and have all the things that you want? So then from there, you can also believe things into existence and that's called manifestations. Too many people focusing on, I don't have this to do. I don't have the car. I don't have the home. I don't have the clothes. I don't have the shoes. I don't have all of these things, but you understand that the moment you said, I don't have it, guess what's going to happen? You're never going to have it because you're speaking those things into existence. That's why I tell the people around me that, listen, you better speak positive things because if you don't, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have the same life that you complain about every single day. And it's not just about how hard you work. It's about what you think. What do you speak into existence? And I know people on the call is thinking, yeah, that sounds easy, but no. Everything that I've done in life and I've had in life so far, I put it in a vision board. I've written it down. I have journals. I put it on paper. 80% of the things that you put on paper, you will have. But you have to write it down. You have to get great at keeping a journal with you and writing in your journals every single day. Success is not about how hard you work. It's not about how hard you work. A lot of people say, I work hard. Listen, I don't work hard. I work smart. See, it's not about, let's think about it, right? Think about people that work hard. They work two, three jobs and they still broke but they work really hard. And then as people that might work a couple hours a day and they make more money in a week than that person makes in a month. See, it's not about who work hard. And so all our lives we've been trained, work hard, work hard, work hard. Yeah, that's great to work hard because you know you gotta work. But at the same time, you gotta work smart. From there, since I was broke, since I was broke, I had this mindset. I didn't wait until I made a little bit of money before I choose to write down my goals. You know, I was doing these things while I was broke, 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 broke. Even when I made a lot of money and I lost it, I still was writing down my goals because I knew that these things are just temporary. Every successful person, you're going to go broke. Every millionaire went broke at least three times throughout their journey. They made it, they lost it. They made it, they lost it. They made it, they lost it. And then they made it and they kept it. And the reason why I said that, because you actually have to go broke to really value 
what you want out of life. If you've never been broke before, then, you know, you really don't know how bad it feels to make some money and then lose it all. And then don't know where the next dollar is going to come from. And a lot of people, this is one thing that they scared of. They scared to go broke. They scared, they scared to say, you know what? I'm going to bet on myself. You know what? Instead of making that $10, that $15 an hour, you know, I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to become an entrepreneur. See, I bet it on myself. When I saw this business, and I had my first opportunity to become an entrepreneur at 20 years old. I told you, I seen the business October 27, 2013. And by no, the end of November, I was a full-time entrepreneur. And I'm not telling everyone on here to, to do that. But like he said in the video, I made up a decision the next day. Matter of fact, after I saw the business, I went back to work and I didn't do any work. I was in the bathroom all the time, on the phone, literally. And before they fired me, the security said, man, you might as well put your two weeks in. She actually made me put a two weeks in. I put two weeks in and I never came back. And the reason why, because I believe in me. I didn't, I didn't, Applebee's was just temporary. Applebee's was training to deal with people in the real world. And if you can deal with people at Baltimore City, you can deal with people from Baltimore City at a restaurant, you can deal with anybody. So I was prepared. Me working at Applebee's, I was prepared. I was also a lifeguard. Before, I was a lifeguard at 17 years old. I didn't know how to swim, but I was broke. I was broke. And one of my friends said, you know, you know, lifeguards are being hired. So from there, when I became a lifeguard, all I did was they said, you got to learn how to tread water for over a minute. I said, what? I don't know how to tread water, but guess what? I was so broke, I convinced myself that I learned how to swim. And I taught myself literally how to swim. And I became a lifeguard. And I became a lifeguard and I started working in neighborhoods where it was ghetto. So I was dealing with all the ghetto kids, jumping over the fence and all that stuff. So I was having to deal with all kinds of people. So when I got involved in AC and I said to myself, oh man, this is easy. All I gotta do is talk to people. I done dealt with all kinds of people before. So guess what happened? I made the decision and said, you know what? I'm going to go all in, right? And if you feel the need to uh, have any type of advice or praise, then you're the problem. I don't need advice or praise from people that don't have what I want, period. I don't listen to people that don't have what I want. And it's not about materialistic things. It's just anything. If you don't have what I want, I'm just not going to listen to you. You got to follow your dream despite the contradiction with the known reality and the expectation and assumptions of other people. And this is the number one reason why most people are not successful is because they care too much about what other people think about them. Oh, I don't want to see them fail. Or what would my friend think about me doing this? Why do you care what anybody think about what you're doing? If they're not paying your bills, they're not supporting your family, they're not doing anything positive to help you, why do you care about what other people think? And the moment that you stop caring about what other people think is the moment where you will become successful. Because when I got involved, I lost friends. I lost family members. I, I lost family members that I still haven't talked to in eight years. And I walk past them every time I go to my family member's house. They don't speak to me no more because I did not listen to them when they was trying to tell me how to live my life. And they felt some type of, I have an aunt that, you know, the moment I got involved in business, she became jealous of me because she's looking at me like, what do you know about business? What are you talking about? And she got to work. 12 hours a day, and she's still living in the same neighborhood for the past 30 some years, same thing, same lifestyle, nothing changed, and you want me to listen to you? Come on, you gotta be serious. You must believe in what you are doing before anybody else can. I believe in myself since day one. I don't listen, listen, I don't listen to what nobody tell me to do. I bump heads with everybody in my family when I first got involved in business because they all try to tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do because you've never done it. And now I'm the person that's talking to them about business and teaching them about credit and all kinds of things in the family. At first, they didn't want to listen, but now everybody listens. Despite being broke, sleeping on a couch that was too small for me, but it was my ideal situation. I remember, I said, losing everything and having to go sleep on the couch at my grandmother's house. Then I had to go sleep on an air mattress in my mom's closet. I got pictures of me sleeping in my mom's closet on an air mattress while building my business. Literally, I slept on air mattresses for years. And it wasn't that I didn't have no money. I was just investing all my money back into my goals. And that's what most people, they don't want to be uncomfortable. I've been uncomfortable for years. I've been living out of a suitcase for years. I have homes in different places that I can stay at. But guess what? I just choose to live on a road because my goals are more important than me being comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. 
I don't want to be comfortable because I see people that's comfortable. They don't have what I want. They don't have anything. They really don't have, they stuck doing the same thing every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, and they never get a chance to really experience life. My life is not about working hard just to pay bills. My life is about working so that I can enjoy my life to the fullest. The formula, you versus you, look in the mirror, that's your only competition. That's your only competition. See, the person that's stopping you from getting where you need to be is you. It's not, it's not, it's not demand. It's not your job. It's not your boss. It's not your mom. It's not your situation, how you grew up in. Because guess what? All of us got situations that, you know, could have stopped us from getting where we need to be. But I look at myself as, guess what? I'm the only person that's stopping me from getting where I need to go. Not nobody else. There's nobody external that's stopping me. It's only me. So when you can have a conversation with you and look at you in the mirror and said that, listen, I'm not going to let me stop me from getting where I need to be. Just say that to yourself every morning. I will not stop me from letting me be who I become, who I want to be. Just speak positive things into existence. You have to be the first person who think that you're going to achieve what you have set out to do. You got to be the first person that believe in whatever you want to be. I don't care what it is. You want to be the, the best trash man in the, in the world? You should be the best trash man in the world because one day you might be able to own your own trash company. And we can agree that people got to do what? They got to take out trash every single day, right? So no matter what you do, you can always one day become a boss and an owner, no matter how small it is. I don't care what little job you work. You could be a waiter right now, but one day you can own a restaurant. But don't listen to someone that's going to tell you, oh, man, you're just going to be good at just being a waiter. Just stick being a waiter. You might be a bartender, but one day you can own your own bar. You can own your own club. So you got to think bigger than where you are right now. And guess what? That thing should be you and what you can be if you just believe in yourself. And that's the number one thing. You got to believe in it. You have to believe that you are going to have everything, even if you don't have it now. Even if you have maybe $5 in your bank account, maybe you can't pay your mortgage. Maybe you don't know where your money going to go to pay your next rent or your phone bill or anything like that. You got to believe in yourself first, because if you don't believe in yourself, the universe is not going to believe in you. Nobody else will believe in you. People say all the time, nobody believe in me. Why would someone believe in you if you don't believe in you? Why? Would, would you believe in someone that didn't believe in themselves? No, you can't do that. We are all magicians turning nothing into something and share magic. We literally can turn nothing into something because I remember eight year, almost eight years ago, I was just at Applebee's, 20 years old. Ain't no nothing about this. I never even thought about even getting involved. I didn't know nothing about this industry. Never met someone that did it, nothing. Literally, all I heard was, you know, Someone named Mr. Aaron Berg used to be a fifth grade teacher in Park Heights. And I said, Park Heights? He said, Arlington. I said, I went to that same school. He was a teacher at the same school. If he can do it, oh, it's a wrap. If he can do it, it's a wrap because guess what? I'm a hustler and I'm from Baltimore City. I was born in another country. So I've experienced literally like a second, third world country type of situation. And then I came to the hood. So you're telling me I done dealt with this? I done dealt with that? entrepreneurship oh this is easy and I've always looked at it that it was easy since day one and people say all the time how did you do it because I believed in myself it wasn't nothing else when my mentors met me they met me with this mindset I didn't have this mindset after I got involved in the business I already had this mindset I just didn't have the vehicle that allowed me to express myself and become the person I am today and despite popular opinions that you have to see it to believe it, it's actually the opposite. You have to believe it to see it. You got to believe it first. You got to believe it before it happens. It's the same thing that make up the stars, make us up. Listen, we are bigger than what the world make us to be. We are bigger than just working a nine to five. We are bigger than just having two weeks off for the entire year. We're bigger than just doing things that we don't want to do that don't make us happy just to pay bills. See, I got to a point in my life where I love money, but guess what? My life is not going to be controlled by money. I'm going to live my life to the fullest. Yes, I want to have a lot of things, but at the same time, I believe in minimalism. I believe in living on less until you have what you want. So instead of, listen, right now, you might have, you know, 
that, that high mortgage? Why not rent out a room or two in your house? Airbnb it out. Why not rent out your car in Toro? Why not find other ways to make money to supplement your income and take that money and then go invest it into the things that you want to do? But most people say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to rent nobody out my car. Well, guess what? Stay in your situation. Stay broke. Stay complaining. And stay saying that the man is stopping you from getting where you need to go when there's so many opportunities out here, but you just don't want to do it. We are all connected to the energy of a higher power, meaning that we all have the opportunity to become who we want to be. But it takes us having faith in ourselves, in the universe, or whatever you want to call it at the end of the day is having faith in yourself. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what you call it, what name. Listen, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you say you believe in something else and you don't believe in you? How can you get up every single Sunday and say, I go to church and I believe in God, but you don't believe in you when you are the first person that you're supposed to believe in before you believe in anything else? You got to believe in you first before you try to believe in anything else. Don't tell me you believe in anything else and you don't believe in yourself because you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You got to have a conversation with yourself and be real with yourself because at the end of the day, you is all you got. So if you lie to yourself every single day, guess what's going to happen? Your life is going to pass by and you're never going to do anything to impact anybody. When we are put here to make an impact on the world, our life is not our life. Our life is to help other people live a better life. And I understood that early. The more value that I bring to people, I'll always be good because I'm bringing value. I'm not keeping information from people. I'm giving people the game. When I learn things, that's what I do. I put my team on. I make sure that my everyone that that's around me, that's building with me, they're independent from me. I don't, I'm not the person where it's those, oh, if you need me, just call me. No, I'm going to give you the blueprint. And then guess what? Go do what it do. I had business partners. I remember when we was in college, when we first got involved in the business, we was broke. Now they got real estate, all kinds of things. Like they help. It's just, listen, the information that I've learned over the years, I pass it down to my peoples. And that's why today we're still winning. It's because I don't keep the information. I learn so I can point to other people. From there, what you throw back out will come back like a boomerang. So if you put out positive things in the universe, it's going to come right back to you. Too many times, too many people, they watch TV all day. Turn off the TV. If you have cable in your house, call, call the cable company up and cancel it because it ain't doing nothing for you. You can get more out of YouTube than watching TV all day. I didn't even let my son watch TV. I don't let my, listen, I'm overprotective of my child and what he puts into his mind. I'm overprotective. My child don't even have no friends. And people say, well, you, you got to take him out. No. No. Because my son will be raised totally different. Meaning that I'm going to raise him to become the best version of himself and he will not be influenced by other people. I don't even want him influenced by my own parents, my own family. I don't want my son to be influenced. Why? Because guess what? I see everybody else that around them that's been influenced by them, and it's not something that I'm very proud of. I'm not proud of it. So at the end of the day, what you put out will come back. Listen, all you have to do is believe that it's going to happen. Love the work so much that it wasn't work, and I lost track of time. See, time is something that's made up. I didn't have a routine. People have been saying, what's your DMO? Listen, I didn't know whether it was Monday or Wednesday unless I had a PBR a home meeting, you know? You gotta get lost in your passion and the numbers on the clock, it's not relevant. Stop looking at the time, time isn't real. Time is not real. It's only what you put in your head. If you say, oh, it's gonna take a long time, guess what, it's gonna take a long time. If you say it's not gonna take long, it's not gonna take long. Time is made up. But you do have to take advantage of the time that you do have. Number one, your health. If you're not taking care of your health, then guess what you're doing? You are subtracting time on your life that it would take for you to really enjoy. I don't want to be the person that's, you know, when I become successful, that I'm not healthy. My body's not healthy. I don't want to be the person that, you know, I don't want to be 80 on the beach with a bare belly. I want to look, when I'm 80 years old, I want to look like I'm 40 years old. And I, it starts now. Your health is your real wealth. Too many times people say, I want to make money. And guess what? You sacrifice, you sacrifice your health to make money. And then later on in your life, you sacrifice your money for your health. Now, is that, does that make sense? Does that make sense? That don't make sense at all. When you can have both at the same time. But it, it's a decision. I don't like going to the gym, but I told myself, listen, I'm going to get up every day. I don't care if it's 30 minutes. I'm going to run on the treadmill. Do it. I'm going to get the blood flowing. 
Why? Because guess what? I'm not going to work this hard to not be around for 100 years to enjoy everything that I work hard for. I believe that I will live until I'm 100 years old. And people tell me I'm crazy for saying that, but guess what? I truly believe that I will live till I'm 100 years old. And that's just my belief. And the reason why that's my belief, because guess what? If I'm going to work hard now, guess what? I want to be able to impact the world for 100 years. You listen to people in the Bible and things like that, they live for what? Hundreds of years. Why? Because they help people. They made an impact. If you're not doing too much with your life, why would the universe bless you with a long life? You're just wasting it. That don't make sense. It don't make sense, right? So time is an obstacle that you put in your own way. You can't put a deadline on success and you can't put a deadline on the manifestation, meaning that because you said, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire when I'm 30. If you don't hit it when you're 30, listen, your job is, is, is not to figure out when, when you're going to do it. Your job is to just put it on paper and believe in it and work for it. Too many people put deadlines on things that they want to be in life. And when it don't happen, when they want it to happen, they quit and they give up. When that's not your job in the first place, you must detach from the win. The win. Detach yourself from the win. Because guess what? It will happen when it's supposed to happen. Don't be the person that want to be successful and you're not prepared for it. Don't be the person that said, oh, I, I want to be around all these successful people and you have no type of value to offer them. Don't be that person. Build value in yourself. You send things into the universe and they come back to you, but they don't always come when you expect them or when you want them to come back. But you have to send good things into the universe. You have to know that what you want, and if you are too attached to the wind, you will be fighting the natural flow of the universe. And I see this happen every single day. When things don't happen when people want it to happen, guess what? They start fighting the flow of the universe. Let the universe work. You take care of what you can take care of, and the universe will take care of what they can take care of. Stop trying to fight with the natural flow of the universe. You're going to get there when you're supposed to get there because you don't want to get there too early and you're not prepared for it. And then you miss out an opportunity for a lifetime. See, the person I am now today, I could be in a room with a billionaire or a millionaire and I still got something to offer. Because why? I spend a lot of time information. Information, information, and from, I'm always learning new things every single day, every single day. So never forget the why. Never forget the reason why you're doing what you're doing, right? This is the ability to be flexible and maintain your belief. It's especially essential when your plans go away. Think about it, right? If you're not flexible, you know, when things don't go as planned, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. You got to bounce back from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. This trust allows you to be at peace and freely throw your intentions in the world. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. You have, listen, failure to failure. People ask me, how, how do you learn everything? I failed. I'm not scared to fail. Literally, I failed in front of people. I don't care. I don't care what you think about me because guess what? I'm not scared to fail. Because I know I learn more from failure than I do from success. Too many times people are even scared to fail. And that's the first step to success is failure. Because guess what? If you never attempted anything in life before and you're telling me that you never failed at it, then you're lying. Nobody landed. Listen, nobody landed on top of the mountain without failing. You got to fail your way to the top. But through every failure, you better learn from it and never make the same mistakes again. So I said to myself, listen, okay, cool. So you're making this amount of money. Instead of spending $1,000 on this car, $2,000 on this apartment, you know, $1,000 on clothes, you know, $1,000 eating out every two weeks, all the things like, instead of doing that, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to become a minimalist. I'm going to learn how to live on less. I'm going to literally learn how to live on less. I told myself, you know what? Me, when I went broke, it was one of the best thing moments in my life because guess what? That's when I became the healthiest in my life. When I went broke, I said to myself, man, I can't afford to be eating meat and stuff like that because it is expensive. I said, I'm going vegan. I woke up one day, I watched this, this documentary called What the Health, and literally that same day, I stopped eating meat. And that was July 2nd, 2016? 16, yep, 2016. And I never, I never went back, never went back, never went back. And people say, all the time, I told you, everyone used to make fun of me, jokes, all of that, you know, but, you know, when I look at my family now, I'm like, y'all got to take pills, y'all aren't healthy, I tried to make my grandmother go vegan a while ago, but you know what, nobody want to listen, she said, I'm going to eat, I'm going to do what I want to do, and guess what, she got sick, and now she can't work no more, 
my grandma went from being he healthy, working mobile to, you know, she got sick with COVID and then now she got a walking up with a walker. I'm like, you've been, my grandma was popping bottles last July for her 70th birthday. She was popping champagne bottles. Now she can't do nothing on her own. Why? Because her health. I don't care about the money that she made that she has saved. Why? Because guess what? She can't enjoy it now. That's why I tell people all the time. It's not about how much money you make. If you don't take care of your health, then what's the point of even making money? To just give it all back to the doctors. That don't make sense. You have no health to keep it going. Your body, you have to take care of your body. If you take care, listen, if you put healthy things in your body, you will have healthy thoughts. If you eat junk, if you just, just don't take care of your health, guess what? You're not going to have healthy thoughts. You're not going to be able to have that high energy to motivate people. You're not going to have the energy to keep going. You don't want to be the person on the call that's breathing hard because people are going to look at you like, I don't care how much money you make, but if you're successful, you're supposed to be successful in all areas of your life, not just in the money part. That's why I said you can't just listen to anybody because I know a lot of people, they know how to make money, but guess what? If they're not making it in a healthy way, then I don't want that. I don't want what they got going on. And I'm, I'm listen, that's just my opinion. I'm not just trying to put my opinion on other people, but I'm telling you, these are the things that I know for a fact that it makes sense. Health is wealth. It's the only real wealth. Money is nothing but a piece of paper. It's nothing but a piece of paper. But too many times people, they risk their health for it. When you really shouldn't do that. You should be taking the money and investing into your health so that you have the energy and the drive to continue to be successful for a long periods of time. You don't want to be the person that was successful in your 20s and then when you get 50 years old, you got heart problems, you got diabetes, you got all these type of things going on where you can change it. Like I said, at the end of the day, you are the reason for your life ending up the way it's ending up. It's nobody else's fault but you. You can't blame nobody else, especially if you're an adult. If you're an adult, listen, I don't care if your dad wasn't around. My dad wasn't around. I became a better man. I'm there for my son. I spend every day with my son. I take, I'm the best dad in the entire world. There's no father out here better than me because I spend time and energy into developing my child. Then I am running the streets, trying to impress the girls and, you know, be at the club. I don't even go to the clubs. I don't put myself in unhealthy situations. And I'm not telling you to stop doing that, but I'm telling you, if you want more out of your life, especially if you're young on this call, take advantage of it in your 20s. I told myself, I'm going to grind hard in my 20s. So when I'm 30, guess what? I can work smart and do everything I want to do. Why? Because I'm just going to work hard for a decade grind hard for a decade and I'm still going to work hard, but I'm going to work smart because I'm just like water, right? You got to be like water, right? Persistence. Think about it, right? A river cut through a rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. And also dripping water hollows out through, through a stone, not because of the force, but because of the persistence. Just think about it, right? If you got a drip of water, right? And you just keep dripping and dripping and dripping on one spot for years, decades, you know, maybe a century. We can agree that what's going to happen over time, you are going to persist and you're going to break through whatever it is. Why? Because water is so powerful that it can erode concrete. It can erode steel. It can erode everything, right? You put something in water over the period of time, guess what happened? It starts to break its molecule. It starts to break its structure down. And over time, it's going to break off. So when you think about these big rivers and things like that, it wasn't no man that did that. It was the persistence of the water over the period of years and billions of years or however long the world is, right? Over those years, that's how the world is formed, through water. The world is 70% through water. So the, the shape of the islands, the shape of the continents, it's all because of water. Water's just hitting it over and over and over and over again. And guess what? We're just like water. Our body is what? 70% water. So if we persist, 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 and just keep going without giving up, guess what happened? We're going to get to where we need to be. You got to be like water. Be like water. If you never heard Bruce Lee said it before, be like water. Because when you be like water, you become flexible. Water takes the, the shape and the form of anything you put in. If you listen, you put water in here, look, it turned out this bottle, right? At first it was in here, but now it's in here, right? It's no difference. Whatever you put water into is going to become that. So ask yourself this question. How hard am I going to continue to persist until I achieve my goals? Are you going to be the person that give up because it's too hard or too tough? Or are you going to be the person that said, man, whatever I got to do, I just can't give up. I can't give up. I can't quit. I can't quit. 
I'm always working on myself. It's not about how physically hard you work. It's about what you work up here because guess what? This right here is more powerful than any computer in the world. It's more powerful, right? You don't get dropped off, like I said, at the top of the mountain. Hard work beat talent when talent don't work. I know a lot of people that's talented, but guess what? If you don't work, then what's the point of you being talented? You're just a waste of talent. Dreams only work if you do. There's some people right now who, who want what you want and is working harder than you. They're working harder than you, so guess what you got to do? You got to work harder than anybody else. Don't fool yourself to believing that you're good enough or that you are less talented than the next person. You got to get out your own way. You got to get out your own way. I don't feel nobody's better than me or anything that I want to do. I feel as though I'm the best. And I'm not saying in a cocky way, but guess what? If you don't feel as though you are the best, then why are you doing it? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. The most valuable thing that you have that you can't get back is your time. You can always get back more money, but you can't get back your time. So don't continue to fool yourself into believing that you are not good enough. You are good enough. You can do what anybody, if somebody else did it, guess what? You can do it too. But you got to believe in yourself hard enough that you know that you can do it. A lot of people think that's, that, that talent is a sensual ingredient. If it says, oh, I'm talented. I'm talented. Listen, that's great. Listen, the X factor is hard work. Like I said, at the end of the day, you got to work hard before you work smart. You can't work smart and not work hard. It's backwards. So you got to work hard first and then you got to work smart, right? No one sees the hours that someone like Kobe Bryant spent in the gym watching his film or his opponents, right? They just see the final product, him scoring 50 points over and over again. But the reality is that the public will praise you for what you practice in private. Nobody knows what I practice in private. Nobody knows I'm on a computer all day, every single day, every single day. My son, mom tell me all the time, you spend more time on your computer than you spend with me. I mean, I spend a lot of time with you, but guess what? My goals and vision is more important than this relationship. Because guess what? If I'm not successful and I can't take care of you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to go to somebody else that can one day. See, at the end of the day, I'm true with myself. I'm not a beta male. I'm true to myself, meaning that I have to protect my family. I have to support my family. If I don't grind and sacrifice and spend time away from my family to, to do the things that I need to do to give them the lifestyle where she can continue to work from home and my son don't have to go to daycare or my son don't have to go anywhere that he don't want to go, that's why I work hard. And that's why I sacrifice time away from my family to get the things that I know that's going to take care of them for the rest of their life. Because guess what? Nobody did it for me. I wish my parents had money. I wish I wish I I wish I didn't have to, to start from zero. I wish I I wish I wasn't gonna be the first millionaire in my family. I wish my family already had money because guess what? It would have been easier. But that's not the reality. It started from me. You know, one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite artists, he said, financial freedom is the key. My family had nothing, so it starts with me. And that's my reality. That's my reality. So guess what? I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to go through whatever I got to go through. And I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to do whatever it takes because at the end of the day, nobody's going to take care of my family but me. You got to plot while you are being patient. When things are not going the way you're going, guess what? You got to be plotting. You got to be writing on your goals, writing on your vision. Man, I wish you guys could see my journals. I actually got to go to Maryland and pick up my journals. I got to go pick up my, I got a duffel, big duffel bag, nothing but journals. I thought it was books. But then I realized my books are in my trunk. It's journals. My stepdad called me and was like, man, you need to come get these books out of my basement. I'm like, man, that ain't books. That's my goals. If you want to learn something, go pick it up. I keep it real with my peoples. Because I know that, guess what? I figured out the blueprint to get us to where we need to go. You got to work on your goals. You got to plan on your goals. You got to train. You got to take care of yourself. When things not going good, say, you know what? Man, I'm going to get up an hour a day and just start working out. Start running. Just start getting yourself active. Start getting yourself healthy. The reason why I got this energy because I just got finished working out. And I don't like working out. But guess what? It's not about what you like. Nobody cares about what you like to do. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. You got to be creative. You got to be thinking about creative ways. You know, one of the things that I learned while I was, you know, plotting and planning was, I told you guys, I learned about credit. So guess what? I start teaching my team. Yo, I, this is how you fix your credit. Because guess what? I don't care how much money you make. If you ain't got no credit, you can't get nothing. Because at the end of the day, if we're building something, you got to have it all together. You can't just have one part together. Yeah, making money is great. But guess what? If the rest of your life is in shambles, you got to get that in order. 
You got to have vision. You got to learn. You got to have goals. Listen, you got you to learn things to empower your peoples around you. Because guess what? If your circle is strong, if your circle is empowered, if your circle is solid, you will never be without. Because guess what? You gave them the blueprint. If we are millionaires, ain't nobody going to struggle because guess what? If I lose it for a little while, I can come to you and get me right. And I'm going to get you right back. Because guess what? We got the information. We got the blueprint. I don't just sit around all day just, oh, I just know AC and stuff. I know a lot of stuff that I don't even talk about because it's so powerful. That's why I think the way I think now, because guess what? I know how to be free. And I told you being free is not about how much money you have because that's millionaires is not free. I want to be a free man. I want to be able to do what I want to do whenever I want to do without anyone telling me how to live my life. You got to be better than you was yesterday. You got to talk like this to yourself, right? You got to watch the film before you make it into the league. You can't say this, oh, I want to become successful, but you don't know what it takes to become successful. You don't study wealthy people. You got to study wealthy people. I've been studying Warren Buffett for almost, a lot of you know, I've been studying Warren Buffett since I was like 13 years old. Literally, he's the first person. Documentaries, everything. Everything. Warren Buffett. I'm like, man, this guy, I want to be like Warren Buffett. And I learned that Warren Buffett, he'd been working hard since he was in his, he's like six years old, he started investing. The guy's like 90 years old now, and he's still grinding. Because guess what? After a while, it become bigger than the money. It become bigger than the money. It become the motivation to show the people that, listen, it's not about, you know, how much money you have and things like that. No, it's about you being an inspiration to other people across the world, right? So before I blew up, I was sitting in my little corner in my little world. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody cared about who I was at Applebee's. You know, I was just studying successful people all the time. I've always had a computer. I always said to myself, man, I don't work hard. I have nails like a female. Literally, you will not find me doing any type of physical work unless somebody asks me for help. Other than that, you're not going to find me doing no construction, no type of physical work. Why? Because I work with my mind. I had to learn that I can control my work and my self-belief, but not the timing. Patience was essential. You have to be patient. That's the number one thing. People want it now. We live in a microwave society where guess what? It's about right now, right now. I gotta be rich right now. I gotta be, I gotta have the house right now. I gotta have the car right now. I gotta have everything right now. It's not gonna happen like that. It's not gonna work like that. Your life is not a microwave. You shouldn't be eating food that you gotta put in a microwave all the time anyway. That's something else. But like I said before, just think about it, right? Think about food, right? Which one tastes better, microwave food or crock pot? Crock pot. You can leave that bad boy on for a whole day. The whole house gonna be smelling good. But you put a food in the microwave, it don't even taste the same no more. So I don't want a microwave lifestyle. I want a crock pot lifestyle. I want overtime and just keep getting better and better. Think about it, right? You left your crock pot on, as the hour goes on, it smells better. And better and better and better. I don't care what's in it, it smells good. So you gotta have a crock pot mindset that over time, guess what? I just keep getting better and better. Patience isn't just the process of waiting. It is your attitude and how you handle it while you're waiting the time. And like I said just now, yeah, patience is great, but what's your attitude? Are you angry? Are you mad? Are you mad at yourself that you're not where you need to be right now? Or are you excited because you know that it's gonna happen is just only timing. You got to have tunnel vision on the goal and keep your head down. Keep your head down. Listen, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. I don't care if somebody come in and hit this position in a couple of months. That's great. We're going to be 10 years from now. I always said to myself, just give it time. We'll see who's still around a decade from now. I'm still here. Everyone I started with, nowhere to be found. I remember when they told me in college, I'm going to end with this. They said, look to your left and look to your right. That next year, that person won't be there. And after I saw that when I went to college, I said, this is life. Because everyone that I started with in life, they're no longer around me. And it's not because we had a fallout. It's because we're on two different paths. They want to be comfortable and broke. I want to be successful and wealthy. I want to be able to buy hundreds of acres of land. I want to be able to have trust funds for my kids. I want to be able to set my family up in ways that my family never even dreamed about. But guess what? It starts with me. It starts with me learning, paying for courses, learning from people and things like that. Too many times 
People don't want to spend money to invest in themselves. I spend money to invest in myself all the time. I'm always learning information. I'm always learning new things, right? So that one day people can just pay me for just me speaking. See what I'm doing for, for right now for free. One day I charge hundred thousand dollars for it. I charge two hundred thousand dollars for it. I might charge a million dollars just for me to speak for an hour one day. And people think you crazy, but guess what? Crazy people got crazy goals. Crazy people do crazy things. And if you're not thinking that big, then guess what? What are you even thinking for? If you're not thinking big and you keep thinking small, you're going to continue to live that small type of mindset lifestyle. You're going to continue doing the same things over and over and over and over and ask yourself, why am I not where I need to be? And it's because you are thinking small. Think big. When you tell people your goals, if they don't say you crazy, they're too small. They're too small. Every time I tell my mother what I'm about to do, she be like, you crazy. But guess what? It's going to happen because at the end of the day, if people don't think you crazy, you are thinking too small. So today, that's all I have for you guys. And I'm really thankful that I was able to put this together so that hopefully you guys can take the information and go out there and apply it and just have a lot of success and just really just take in all of the notes. I said, listen, patience, your attitude while you're patient. If it's not happening for you right now, be patient, be excited. Write your goals down. Plot while you are planning. Plot while you are planning. Because guess what? The goals you put out on paper, one day it can happen. So at the end of the day, it's all up to you. If you believe it can happen, it will. If you believe it can't, it won't. But it all starts with your belief system in yourself. Start to believe in you more than you believe in any, anything else. Start to believe in you more than anybody else. Anybody else. The first person you should believe in is yourself. So I thank you guys again, and I look forward to being back next week with some more gems.